terrific. Ryan, how are you? I'm good. Do I call you good. coach or teach or Adam? What do I call you? Yes, Mr. Adam's fine. Adam's fine. I, I was going to go with uh, yeah, Mr. Teacher, but that's, that's <laughs> fine too. Whatever you want there. So, yes, yes. Well, thank you for joining us today. I'm excited to have you here, and we're gonna we're gonna hit some uh, some of the hard hitting questions with you. So I hope you're ready for whatever's to come here. But uh, I appreciate you joining us. What are you? Uh, are you in between meetings right now? Are you in between practices? What's going on in your life? Uh, in between workouts, really, uh, just working out like twice a day. So it just caught me in between workout, walking the dog right now. Took a little break. Okay, and you said you got to you got to pick them up at the air or the the dog kennel yesterday at a fancy dog room or something. You just came back from your vacation. Yep, nothing fancy about it though. Nothing fancy. Okay. All right. Uh, I did get to see a uh, one of those fancy electric cars in action for the first time. You got to show me the no hands driving simulation, which is pretty cool too. So uh, it's a little bit different than what what our uh, big F one fifties are here. But hey, it's uh, it gets the job done there. So awesome. Well, explain a little bit. We're gonna we'll start out. We've got a. I want to be careful your time here. I know you got lots of stuff going on, but let's talk a little bit about your background here. A little bit about uh, what got you to the point where you're at, and then and what you're doing right now. So I can I can touch on it a little bit, but um, so Ryan is a is a quarterback, a uh, football quarterback. For those of you who don't know, he's the one that takes the ball and he passes it. Right, he gets the ball from the center, um, and, and usually it's pretty on target. I think uh, so. He gets to, to work with the guys on that. Um, has worked his way up through the uh, high school collegiate realm and then made it to the professional world. So um, been with the Buccaneers for a while, and and, uh, and he can explain a little bit about what he's got going on there. But you want to talk a little bit about your high school to uh, going on to college to uh, professional? What what brought you to the point where you're at here today? Sure, I um, grew up in Los Angeles. Um, I wasn't the biggest recruit. I had like two offers. Wyoming and Tulane so I ended up going to Tulane which is in New Orleans um, played my redshirt freshman year all the way through my senior year and then went undrafted and signed with the Saints so I was with the Saints for two years and then I've been with the Bucks ever since so that's uh, I've been with the Bucks six years so it's been eight years total um, it's gone really really fast it's been a lot of hard work and it's been a lot of fun yeah, you talked about the uh, the transition kind of from from the high school to to collegiate and stuff, and and again moving across the country. What kind of a lot of times we talk about our risk taking here, positive and negative. Uh, what are some of the positive risks that have turned out for a, a big uh, big plus in your life? I know probably moving across the country is a not as a huge recruit or anything, working working hard. What are some of the positive risks that you've been able to that have seen paid off in your life here? I would say, I mean, the biggest risk probably has just been betting on myself, uh, just being confident in my ability to be a, a good performer, a good football player. Um, you know, there's a lot of people that will make it to the college ranks, but then they don't really believe in themselves, so they don't put the work in, I think. Uh, I'm not the most talented person. I've a decent amount, but it's that's not what sets me apart. It's probably my belief in myself, confidence, um, mental toughness. Um, yeah, I think I think going all the way out to Tulane was a risk. You know, I could have stayed closer to home. I could have gone to like a JUCO, but I wanted to go D one, and so I was just hell bent on that. Um, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. You never know what could happen. Could have gone to JUCO and ended up being drafted somewhere, you know, but it is what it is. I don't really ever look back. I'm always looking forward. Something I, I love that how you, you talk about, you know, betting in yourself and, and believing in yourself when when not a lot of people do. I think that's something that we have uh, in our class today. You can't see the, the camera's facing me up here, but there's a, there's a lot of people watching you right now. Um, and so one of the things that we, we have a cool class here, we have freshmen through seniors. So we've got some seniors that are going to be graduating in what, like three, four days, something like that. Yeah. Coming right up. Okay. So they're, they're going to be going off and doing their different adventures and, and going different places. 
Uh, what was what was the transition? Is there anything that you can give them kind of an insight into what to what to expect? I know your your uh, your your journey was a little bit different than what theirs will be. A lot of them, but what was a transition? How did you transition from that high school um, you know age to the to the collegiate world and, and trying to uh, make make it work there? Uh, I mean, it's it's a really tough transition, uh, especially if you're moving away. If you're not if you're not close to home, you know, it's going to be a culture shock. You're going to meet a bunch of different people. Uh, it could be really difficult at first. Uh, my advice would be to try to stick it out at least two years. Uh, I know people in my family have had first year kind of tough. Um, but I feel like the first year you're just kind of figuring everything out. You're away from home. You're on your own. You're It's all about you know, taking care of your own business and managing your own time and making the right friends and, and surrounding yourself with good people and making friends and having it like you want to have a good time. Um, but it, sometimes it can take a little longer. So my, my big thing is kind of like stick with it. You know, it's, it's not always the easiest thing, but in the end, it'll be a, it'll be a great transition. Yeah, and having, having that, uh, the ability to kind of be flexible and, and really really dive into some of those things and, and step outside your comfort zone with that. So I think it's a great example there. The Another one we, we really like to talk about is the importance of physical activity. So you're the last person I need to tell about how, how important physical activity is, right? You, you're around it all the time. You do it for a, for a living. Um, but one of the things that we can talk a little bit about and, and how I first met Ryan was out at Exos out in California. So that's the place that I worked and, and coached out there. Um, and, and so I think that was a really cool eye-opening experience for anybody that was joining that facility. Something I think that they do a really good job of there is, is developing the whole athlete, the whole individual. It's not like you're just going there to, you know, bang your head against the wall and lift heavy weights, right? We're, we're diving into all, all aspects of that. So, what are some of the ways that you have uh, maintained such a such a good career throughout your your athletic career and, and your your physical wellness? You know, not just in your sport, but um, outside of your your sport as well. What are some things that you do to to get the edge and, and maintain that uh, long lasting physical well being? I think uh, to make it this long in the NFL, you have to find ways to get just a little bit better. So if I can find a way to get like half a percent or one percent better in the long run, that's a that's a major gain for me over the people that I'm competing against. So a big thing for me is staying healthy. You know, I've, I've played eight years. I've only had one injury, knock on wood. Um, and so I think it's very important staying healthy. It doesn't matter if you are an athlete or not. Um, staying healthy and uh, working out and eating right are the biggest things. It's really good for your mental health as well. I know it's like scientifically proven, you know, just exercising for 30 minutes a day to an hour and eating right is going to make you happier and, and healthier. Uh, but for me personally, I'd, yoga has been a very big part of my um, physical athletic career because I, I feel like it's really good for my uh, muscles and ligaments. And that's part of the reason I feel like I haven't gotten hurt, uh, eating healthy, trying not to drink as much alcohol. Um, you know, those are all big things and staying healthy, not pulling muscles, not having any, uh, ligament damage. So I think that part has been a big journey for me. I've gotten a lot better, uh, from where I was as a, a rookie to where I am now as a, as a veteran. I think that the things that you're saying too, we, I always get excited when they talk about yoga and everything. I think that was, that was one of the things I was introduced to when I, when I was going out and working in, in, in Exos and, and some of the different things. And, um, and, and now I, I, I get to teach a yoga class here at, here at Dowling. I think it's a, it's a fun thing that it's good to get exposure to it early on. I think you probably agree with, you know, if you can get that kind of stuff early and, and, and have those do the little things, right. That's going to make a big difference in, in the long run. I think he's a true testament to that too. The, uh, the nutrition side of things, I think is a big thing too, that, um, that I wasn't really aware of until we got out there that, uh, you know, the catering, right. The catering of the different meals and the different meal prep things you, you can, uh, you can have that and, and really dive into that and, and get that extra edge. So, um, so yeah, obviously the, the importance of that physical activity, uh, I'll, I'll ask one more, one more topic here and then I'll open it up. I know our, our class has got some good questions for you too. Hopefully, uh, Hopefully, get some hard-hitting ones here. But um, one one topic that I always like to bring up is 
is the, the social pressures, okay? And so with, with yours, it's gonna be a, a different scenario than a lot of people, but um, the social media pressures, the, you know, the, the positive and negative sides of that, the, the social pressures, whether it's uh, media or if it's, if it's uh, friends or family, whatever it might be, what are some things, are, are you, first of all, do you wanna talk, are you on social media? How, did, how does that affect your, your own life? Are there people that, uh, that have um, extreme pressures on that and how do you, how do you handle all the different um, things that come along with, with being in your position as, the, as a professional? I personally am on social media, but if you were to follow me, you'd be pretty disappointed. It'd be a bad follow because I don't post a whole lot. I don't ever feed my story. I don't feed the gram that much, you know. Um, I feel personally that whenever you do, you kind of um, you're trying to please other people and not yourself. So um, it's. I know it's tough uh, because social media is good in some ways and a lot of people are on it, especially your friends. And it's good to stay um, interactive with friends, especially when you go away to college. Uh, it's a great tool, but um, it is dangerous and what you're posting and, you know, in our position, people posting of you. So you got to be careful if your friends are posting something that you obviously wouldn't post, but you're in there in that picture, you know, you, people will look through it and notice you or whatever. And so you got to be careful, not just with what you're posting, but with uh, what other po people are posting of you. That's, that's, uh, that's good advice. I think yesterday we, we talked with, uh, with somebody, I was talking with one of my friends that uh, just graduated from, from Iowa and is looking at free agency and stuff right now, uh, looking at some different teams. And, and one of the quotes that, that I, I thought he had a really good one was talking about how if you post on social media, whatever you post, you can think of it as kind of like a tattoo, right? So what you post out there, right, that sticks with you. You can try to remove it, right? You can try to delete it, but it's going to leave some scars. And I thought that was a really interesting way to look at that in that perspective where uh, you, you may be, uh, you may post something and you think, well, you know, it's harmless or whatever else. And then it may come back to, to bite you after that. So uh, we'll come back to this and that, you know, I have more questions with it. I think um, I, I love what you said about how, how it's not, you're not necessarily posting things to please yourself, right? You're trying to, to please others in that sense. So it's a, it's a tough, tough balance to find there. Um, but with that, I'll, I'll open it up to a couple of questions that we've got. Uh, we've got some people that are chomping at the bit here, so I hope you're ready. So Gary, do you want to, you want to start us off here? What do you got for us? Yeah. So after like the fine on your whole career and like just fighting for spot on teams and year after year, how did it feel when the clock hit zero in the Super Bowl? So I was great question. First of all, um, I was way more emotional after we beat the Packers. Um, when we beat the Packers, it was almost like I knew we were going to win the Super Bowl because we, we just had to get there. Um, but that Packers game was like up and down, and they kicked the field goal, which I thought was the stupidest thing to do. You got Aaron Rodgers over there, um, and so. There, whenever that game happened, I was way more like, oh, my gosh, we're going to win it all. And then the Super Bowl was kind of, like, so easy. It, uh, it was just like, don't mess it up the whole second half. Don't mess it up. Don't mess it up. And we didn't mess it up. So it, it felt really, really, really good. And then we got to, like, have our own little party because we played in Green Bay. And because of COVID, you couldn't see your family or friends. So it was just us in the locker room after the game. And it was, as the kids would say, lit. Do you have your ring yet? No, we're supposed to get it uh, this summer, but I got size for it. Yeah. You're gonna have to you're gonna have to send some pictures when you get, when you get that, and I'll definitely do that. Look at so look at this man just, just keeping up with the times. Hashtag lit. That's, that's yeah. fine. I'm a I'm a young 31. Yeah, young 31. You'll see you'll see him commenting yes, queen on some different posts and stuff on Instagram. So We'll, uh, we'll get that going. Awesome. So good question to, to start off. I think it's great to see that we talk about the, our resiliency in here too. And I think that's a, it's a perfect explanation for that. So great question, Derek. What else do we have to start us off here? You got some things that you're wanting to ask before we get into anything else? Yeah, Maddie. What do you eat in a day? What do you eat? What are your nutrition guidelines? I know at wow. XOS we got it catered, but what was, what was some, some nutrition stuff you do? I okay so typical training day so I just had uh 
about three fourths cup of oatmeal with some cashew butter. I'll mix in some um, yogurt, uh, Greek uh, low fat yogurt, some berries in there. Um, if I'm not doing that, I'll usually do like four eggs scrambled with some toast and avocado. Um, and then I'll go work out. I'll hammer a protein shake, at least 30 grams of protein. Um, and then from there, I'll usually eat some type of bowl, like a protein bowl with rice, quinoa, veggies, meat. Um, I would say that I typically try to stick to like a paleo diet guideline, if that makes sense. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's just a lot of veggies and protein and rice and sweet potatoes basically and no no breads um so night last night i had like two steaks some brown rice and green beans um and then i finished off with either a protein shake before i go to bed or two percent uh yogurt that um it has casein protein so it's a slower acting protein um in the off like in the true off season because you know quarterbacks we kind of get dad bods mm -hmm. Um, because we don't get to like work out as much in season and we don't do a lot of running. So, um, right after the season ends, I like to do a little intermittent fasting so I can lose a little bit of that dad bod pretty quickly. So I usually, um, stop eating at like six or seven and then I will, can, um, pick up eating the next day at, uh, whatever 16 and eight is. So, uh, like 10 o'clock, um, 11 o'clock, uh, and then I try to stay away. I very, very um, anti. If there's anything with a label that says added sugar, even if it's one, I try not to eat it. So any added sugars in anything, I'm a big proponent of not eating. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my diet. That's a it's good stuff. A lot of a lot of good quality good quality stuff in there. Hi there, how's it going, Mr. V? Yes, we have some. We have a tour up here. If you guys want to come in and say hello here, got, this is uh, this is Mr. Ryan Griffin. He uh, plays for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, and I used to coach with him out in uh, out in California. So you wow. Know, yeah, so we've got the. He's just talking about some uh, some good stuff. How he how he prevents the the dad bod and the quarterback stuff and. Uh, yeah, so. well, that's pretty cool. Yeah, who all do you have here? I have Steve Koschel is a freshman here, yep. and his first cousin is Charlie Bird. Charlie, and his dad Alex, and Charlie is considering coming to Dowling. All right, straight up for a hockey team. Very cool, Charlie and Alex. Well, uh, we can say hi to Ryan. Ryan, this hey, is hey, nice to meet you guys. Uh, it's the <laughs> recruiting technique that we use here at Dowling. We, we, we cue them in. We say, "Okay, I right, bring the bring the tour in the classroom now." It's, 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 uh, it's a good, good time there. But, well, nice so. to meet you. Thanks for visiting Dowling Catholic yeah. virtually. Yes. Yeah, yeah you do. You guys better go to school here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so, big, big promotion. Yeah. All right. It's, uh, well, good to see you guys. Yeah. Bye. Bye. Yep. Thanks. So one of, one of the things there you go. It's a paid promotion. We'll, we'll get you we'll get your You're check. From that. I would like a cut of their tuition, please. Yeah, <laughs> tuition payment. Yeah, they're locked. Yeah, they're locked. Yeah, they're locked. Yeah, yeah, they're yeah, locked. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, way to turn back like that. See, that is like a lot. They're, they're like, <laughs> <laughs> like, wow. The dad is more excited with the kids. So, cool. so one one story I always like to bring up about about Mr. Griffin here. We uh, his eating eating nutrition stuff. So at the end of the summer when I worked with him. So I was his uh, his receiver for the summer. So I got to I had lots of calluses by the end of it. I, I caught every ball that he was throwing at, and uh, he, he can throw he can throw a decent speed. So as a thank you, he was nice enough to, to take me out to dinner. We went to a, a nice little restaurant, some fancy place that I had uh, I had never heard of before. By uh, what was it, the Tory Pines or something like that? Yeah, that's something something some nice place. So we we get there and we're looking at the menu. He looks at me, he goes, you think we can eat everything on the menu? I'm like, what are you talking about? I don't know. He's like, no, let's, let's do it. Let's, 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 get, let's get like one of this, 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 and starts pointing off. I'm like, you're serious? And you're, you're reasoning why. He's a great boyfriend. He said, uh, I'm taking my was a girlfriend there next week, and he wanted to make sure what was, uh, he wanted to know what was good on the menu. I said, that's the way to do it right there. You got you to gotta test out the product. And, uh, you, I think you've left out the fact that you were also my center. There were a couple of good photos of you snapping me some, some balls as well. 
We do, yes. I'll uh, I'll try to pull that up. He was I was uh, I was a great blocking center, you know, working on shotgun formation there too and stuff. And uh, uh, I tell you what, the uh, that that summer, I think I I caught more uh, more more footballs than I ever did in high school. I usually usually in high school, you got balls to go over this way and this way every time. That thing would be right there. So um, we'll we'll ask you later. Uh, besides besides me, who has the best hands that you've worked with on the team? We'll ask that in the, the rapid fire question, but. Um, uh, but I, I never did go down and get my try out with, uh, with the bucks, but, um, we'll, we'll maybe see about this summer coming down and doing that. So, uh, but yeah, awesome. So nutrition, that's a huge portion of that. Um, any other questions you guys have right now? I can go on to, yeah, Coop, what's up? What does a day look like on game day? A game day. What is the oh, a routine? What does the day look like? What does that <laughs> look like? Coop, good stuff. Good stuff. Um, I mean, probably not what you guys are thinking so if it's a if it's a game at one o'clock usually you wake up we've got like uh they offer a team meal um some guys eat it some guys don't a lot of guys um will wake up and just go home and go eat if it's a home game uh if it we're on the road you'll eat the team meal um and then you just bust over the stadium if you're on the road or if it's at home you just drive over and walk into the stadium like you're going to work um but if it's a later game, like if it's a Sunday night football game or Monday night game, you have so much time during the day. So if it's a home game or even a away game, usually you wake up, you get breakfast. Uh, we got a group of guys. We'll go for a lovely walk. You know, you got to get outside and see the sun. You can't just lay in your bed all day. So we'll go for a lovely walk, a stroll, if you will. Um, and then you go back, you'll eat lunch or whatever. Everyone usually takes a nap. Um, usually like 30 minutes, 45 minutes. And then, uh, you wake up, it's a lot of sitting around to be honest. Um, and if we're at home, a lot of guys go home and just honestly, they play video games, you know, or just do whatever they usually would do to kill the time. And then, uh, you show up and you show up to work and you take care of business. That's uh, it's it's a whole lot different than I think what a lot of people think too. When you think about the, you know, you think of, oh, it's got to be scheduled every every moment of that. And I think one of the one of the things that they'll talk about there too is how when you get to that point, right? When you're when you're at that level, you kind of know what what fits you best, right? In high school, the coach has to decide everything for you. You have to, you know, everything's strict and rigid because because high schoolers don't necessarily know what the best thing is for them yet for the. For that routine. So when you get to college and professional, uh, it's a it's a great question though, too, because it's a it's good to look at that. And yeah, what you're, you're 100 percent right. That that didn't happen until the NFL. Like even college, college was very much regimented, and you had walk through, and you had meeting, and then you had, and then for us, it's like if you can't take care of your own business on your own, and you got to quickly realize that how to do it. Um, if you can't take care of your own business, then you're not gonna make it very long in this in this league so just with all that i was saying like a lot of the times i'm if it's if it's me i'm going through the script to the day of the game um just maybe a couple couple plays a couple things i'm gonna visualize um other guys will literally run through every play and just write down okay i have if it's a receiver they'll be like all right i have an in i have a a post i have a hitch i have shallow you know and so you have to do whatever you have to do to get mentally prepared but no one's gonna like force you to do it a certain way when you get to the nfl yeah i think that's that's a good way to talk about the maturity too when you when you look at that and, and how that all affects you know different people are going to handle things differently and i think that's one of the things we talk about here too is, is time management so uh, you know, as, as you progress through your high school, the collegiate to, to professional levels, uh, time management routines, how have you seen that change? Do you, do you find yourself being uh, man, able to manage your time a little bit better? And, and what are some strategies that you do? Because I'm sure that you have lots of different you got practices, you've got work, you've got interviews, you've got different things like that. What are, what are some of the ways that you've found that works best for you in that, in that time management area? There's a lot that you have to – cram into a week for uh, during the football season and so it's really important that we have a routine uh, we always talk about it as like a process a routine whatever it is is everybody's got their own and I quickly realized that when I got to New Orleans Drew Brees would do the same thing every day at every hour so like you you could be like all right what's Drew doing on a Tuesday at 
10 a.m. and I could tell you 100% what he'd be doing because that's his routine, that's his process, and that's how he would get stuff done and be efficient with his time. And so that's really the big part of of our week because for quarterbacks, we're watching so much film and we got, you know, they got media and you got all these people that you got to please outside of yourself. And the whole time you got to get ready for the game. And so it's very important that you have your process or your routine so you can fit everything in and you know you can't overextend yourself. So if someone asks you to do something at Tuesday at 10, you're like, well, I can't do that. I'm I'm busy. And you have – I know what I'm going to be doing at 10 a.m. on Tuesday, you know. It's not like on a calendar and you don't need a secretary. You just have your process and your routine. And I think I think that was something that, that you know, I've noticed just from working with – with you and then other, you know, other people that, that have been at that in that level, I guess. And I think that it's it's good to know that when you have those routines, you can you can straight up tell people like, you know, if this is going to work for you or not, right? When we were setting up the call, Ryan knew exactly like, you know, what day he'd be able to do it, what time, all that kind of thing. Uh, and and when you're when you're setting that stuff up, it's not that you're you're trying to be you know, Rude say, oh, I'm busy all this time. It's like, no, it's just it's that that setup routine and, and having that there. So, um, so that's really good to to learn from that. You you mentioned you mentioned Drew and and a couple others. Um, one of the questions that I had later on, but I'll, I'll come to that. What what are some of the people that that you feel like you've learned the most from over your years, whether it's in in high school, collegiate, or the the professional realm? Uh, some of the either coaches or players or. Um, you know, members of the staff, who, who have you learned the most from uh, and, and, you know, helped you to, to lead you to who you are today, kind of developed you, formed you into the individual that you are? I would say as far as professionally, how to play, be a quarterback in the NFL, by far Drew Brees. Um, and then whenever I got to work with Tom Brady this year, I noticed that they have a very similar thought process about how you prepare and, and be a good quarterback and I'm not surprised because they're both uh, really good obviously I learned a lot of football from Sean Payton I thought he was a really smart coach I learned a lot of technique uh, from my two position coaches one in college Dan Dodd and one in the NFL Mike Bajakian they're just really good at hammering technique and you know the interesting part is I had other coaches along the way that I thought were really bad, but they were still in the NFL or college level. I thought my high school coach was great. The, the most interesting thing to me and the eye-opening thing as far as development of players is you can – your best coach might be one of your high school coaches or it might be a college coach. In the NFL, some of these coaches are not good and they're not – they're not – don't know the position – but they're friends with somebody, they got the job through somebody, they're taken care of. And so it's not always you think it's like, okay, the best coaches get to that level because it's the highest level. That's not the case. Like you, a lot of times you'll have your best coach in high school. You'll learn the most from somebody at that level, um, which was really eye-opening to me. And, and I, I love that you said that because I think that we, we talk a lot about the you know, the developmental stage, right? When, when you're working with the, the high school student athletes and, and, and individuals, whether it's in the athletic side of things or, you know, in the academic or just in life in general, I think it's, it's important to realize that in high school, you're such, you're at such an interesting age where you're developing um, in both in, in, you know, physical and mental and, and, and spiritual as well, you know, all kinds of aspects of that. And, and I've talked to a lot of the some of the bigger, bigger coaches, you know, at the, the higher levels that have said that same thing, it almost turns into a good old boys club where, when, when you get to the NFL, who, who do you know, right? Uh, what, how do you get into that position? And, and it's, um, it's interesting to see that. So it's good to get your perspective on that. And, and you mentioned all the, all the people that you've learned a lot from, uh, if you, and this is tough to categorize, but if there's one thing, uh, that, that most all of them have in common, if there's one thing that you had to pick out that, or, or a couple of things, um, you mentioned the time management routines. What, are, what is something that you've noticed that a lot of those uh, successful people with people that have taught you a lot about that? Is there anything specific? I would say every single one of those people are extremely passionate about what they do. And so if you have a passion and a true desire and you really enjoy what you're doing, you know, there's always that cliche, if you enjoy what you're doing, it's not work, you know, and that's, that's really true is if, a lot of those people are, have a passion for the game, have a passion for 
life. And so it never really felt like they were working. You know, they just loved coming in and doing that because that, that's what they enjoyed doing. I love that passion. That's a, that's a great, that's a great way to, to categorize that. So uh, we'll, we'll open it up. If you guys have any other questions, I want to make sure that I know a lot of you guys had stuff. So um, we can, we can open it up for that. Tegan, you have one here. Yeah. Do you ever do anything like take your mind off football or something you do for yourself? Good that's question. What do you do for your, yourself, your personal wellness and your, your well being that way? Uh, well, I have my dog and my fiance now. And so they both live with me, which I, I didn't have the previous couple of years, which is really nice. So try to Monday night and Friday night, just hang out with them, you know, take her out on a nice date, get the dog a bone, you know, hang out, have a good time, take him to the dog beach. Um, and then this time of year, it's very easy for me to take my mind off football because um, we're not doing as much. So I, I, I'm a very active person. I like being outside. So hiking, camping, golfing, basketball, going to the beach, um, all those things. I, I wondered if the, if, you, if your, your pup was going to be part of that. That's uh, the, is it the, the same one that, that I got to, to meet out in California? Okay. Yep. The, possibly the most loyal dog that I've ever met. The thing, it will not leave Ryan's side. And I, and he said, I don't know if it's just because it's a, it's scared to leave or if it's more obedient or what, but it, that thing is a, it's a very, very uh, right there with him all the time. So we'll, we'll have to see if I can find a picture of that too. But awesome question. What else do we have? Anything right now for, uh, that goes along with what we're talking about here? Anything else you guys have? We'll talk a little bit about the, you know, you talk about the relationships and in, in with, with your fiance and, and, and now, now fiance. Um, the relationships that you've developed with, with people along the way, how have you maintained those as, as you've moved, you know, around the country now? You would go from go from LA to or San Diego, you know, California to the to New Orleans to, to Tampa now, you know, um, still waiting on you to come up and visit in Iowa. But what, what are some ways that you've you've kept in touch with people and, and, and been able to maintain those relationships? It's tough to be honest. I mean, there's um it takes it's hard work. Uh, my fiance and I talked about it actually because she, for the first time, is not living in California. So it's it, it takes uh, an effort to try and reach out to people, your parents even. You know, you just find yourself you don't talk to them for a week or two. Um, so you, it's really important that you take the time to call, FaceTime, whatever it is. Um, and then I, I mean, I really enjoy hanging out with people face to face. So I was just in California. And then I was in Denver visiting my brothers and like this weekend, I'm going to Charlotte for a bachelor party. Like it, it's a lot of effort. I probably overextend myself too much um, trying to go and see people. Uh, but it, I mean, I enjoy it. So at the same time, it's, it's a give and take. I think that, that travel can, can be a, can be a helpful thing. You talked about ways to take your mind off of football as well. And, 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 you know, being with people in person, I think is such a, such a huge thing. We talk about that here too, you know, how, how important that face-to-face -face interaction with, with people are and, um, and doing it that way. One question that I think is, would be especially for this year and stuff, how, how in your position, you're in a unique situation where, you know, just coming off of an incredible season with, you know, an amazing team and, and great people there and your teammates and, and the Super Bowl victory, how do you make the decision and, and, and decipher between people that are your true friends? How do you know they're true friends and how do you know the people that are, um, you know, that are, that are there and interested in you because of the, you know, your position or different things like that. How do you know when you have somebody that's a true uh, solid relationship in there for you? Great question. Um, you know, it's important. You see who like truly wants to spend quality time with you, especially I mean, if we're talking people outside of football, um, you, it'll reveal itself over time, you know, like you might not know right away, but after However long, you know, there'll be a comment or there'll be a, hey, let's hang out with Gronk, you know, and it's like, okay, well, like, you're clearly not here to see me. You clearly want to, you know, see the other people. So um, it, it usually reveals itself. It's not that hard to figure out. Um, but I feel like sometimes I'd be hyper aware to it. Um, you know, if I'm meeting new people, I typically, typically don't tell them what I do. 
um, just because it usually leads to a really long conversation or um, them wanting something. Um, so it you're, it is tough. Um, I do feel like I have a really quality group of friends that um, are true friends. And so whenever I'm spending free time, I try to spend it with them. You know, I'm not, I usually am not um, broadening my circle too much these days. You know, I've gotten to that age, you know, I really just want to spend quality time with quality people. I love that. I think, I think that's a, it's a great way to talk about it too. Cause it there, you know, it's tough, tough questions, but, but things that are, that are true to, you know, how can you really, you know, really understand that. And I think we, I've talked to some of my, some of my friends in that same category where it's like, you know, talking about how, how can you decide from between that? How do you know? And, and why would I spend time with people that, you know, that don't have that same, that same feeling to me, you know, what, if they're not giving the same effort towards that, that friendship or the relationship that, that you're in, um, and if they don't have your best interest in mind, then, then it's difficult to do that. So it's great to hear that and, and, and understand that perspective of that. Um, and I think that it's, it's great, like you said, that actually being with people and, and having that interaction with the, them and face to face, I think is, is huge too. So um, that's, that's awesome. Thank you. What are the things I know, Romo, I know you had something earlier that you were wondering about one of you guys, do you have any other questions that you want to throw out there? No, they answered it. They answered it? Okay, perfect. Awesome. Well, we'll talk a little bit about, um, I, I want to talk about, we talk goal setting in here. Uh, and we talk about the SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable, realistic, timely. Uh, what are some ways that, you know, obviously you, you uh, in a world that you're in right now, with the, such a goal-oriented world, what are, what are some ways that, do you have goal setting uh, routines that you do? Do you have goals that you've, you've been a part of? We talked about journaling last time. Um, or any of those things that, that you you use in your everyday life? Um, I mean, I used to set goals. Um, I know originally, like, my goal as a rookie was to make the active roster. And then I did that as a rookie, and I was like, okay, I need to set some higher goals, you know. Um, but it's tough in my position because so much of it is outside my control. You know, I don't play unless somebody gets hurt. Um, and so – you can set a goal to be all pro, but then if you never see the field that year because <laughs> Tom Brady doesn't get hurt or Drew Brees doesn't get hurt, I mean, it's, it's not like you messed up. It's just you just weren't given the opportunity. So it's tough to set goals. So I my main goal and my has been my goal for the past six, seven years is just get better. And so every year I try and and get better, work on my craft, perfect my craft, because I know if I get better, then – people will still want to keep me around. And so I'm always just trying to work on my game um, just to get better. And it's, it's tough because it's not like one of those tangible goals, but at the same time, I know that I've achieved it. And that's, that's good to hear with, with, you know, getting better just that little bit. We talk about getting 1% better every day. And, and um, the individual I was talking to yesterday is, is in a kicking position. So in a similar way, you know, he, he may get one shot, one chance to affect the game, right? You may get one, one opportunity to go out there and actually make a play. Um, and I, I think that's a, it's an interesting perspective where, where the position you're in, where you have to be ready at all times, right? It's, it's not something that you can go into a game like, well, you know, I'm, you know I'm, I'm just hanging out this game. It's nothing too crazy. It's, it's you got to be ready at all times. And, and that mental preparation um, takes a big, a big toll on that too. Uh, we talked a little bit about the mental side of things. And one of the big, big topics that I, I really like to hit on in here is, is mental, mental health. Right. And we talked about how the, the idea that, um, everybody has mental health, right. It's not, it's it, you, some people have positive mental health. Some people have, uh, you know, struggling with mental health. What are some ways that, you know, is that a part of your life that, that you've, uh, seen grow in certain ways? What are some ways that you, you work on your mental health? well-being your mental health in general um a big thing for me um talking with the people the the people that i was talking about like if as long as i am fostering relationships with quality people i'm usually in a good mental space um exercising prayer all these things meditation all all help with mental health um taking some time to yourself you know whatever that is um 
but yeah, mental health is, is definitely something that everybody, like you said, I wouldn't say struggles with, but it's a part of everybody's life and it has ups and downs, you know, and the important part is to not, to not ride those ups and downs too hard, you know? Yeah, I, I think that's, that's great to, to think about the, the ups and downs, right? You're, there's very few people that are just, you know, flatline the entire time. They're just a steady state. You, you find a lot of people that, um, you know, one day they're at the top of the world, right, the peak, and then the next day they're, they're struggling with something down here, and it can be that roller coaster of emotions. And so finding ways that you can cope with that and, and, and be able to have the, the true friends that we talked about there to, to be able to talk to anytime, um, I think that's a, that's a great way to do that. Uh, with, with that, I, I want to want to go through, I've got a, a rapid fire round. Uh, I, I like to ask a lot of questions and I, I uh, hopefully have some of these. Yes, you um, if, you have, if, if you have that, well, let's, let's, let's get it going here. Okay. So if you guys have rapid fire, few questions, throw them out too. So um, we, we talk about the teammates you've learned the most from uh, besides me, best hands that you've worked with, best receivers. Chris Godwin. Okay. Best dancer on the team, best dancer besides you. Not Gronk. Um, I don't know. Sean Murphy Bunting. Okay. Uh, comedian, somebody who makes you laugh no matter what. Uh, Ali Marpet, more laugh at than laugh. At. Okay. All right. Uh, favorite place to play that you've been at? Arrowhead. Okay. Um, worst place to play, the place that you hate playing the most? New York. New York. Jets or Giants? They play in the city. Oh, well, I guess, who are you playing that you hate playing? Uh, the, it's the wind and the cold and the rain. Terrible stadium. Okay. All right. Just all together. New York just sucks. Okay. All right. Uh, secret talent that you have that, that nobody knows about? Rubik's Cube. Rubik's Cube, wow. Okay, like time-wise, or you just you just sit, can solve a lot of that? With? My best time was like a minute 20. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, question. Uh, favorite game he's ever played in? Favorite game you've ever played in? Probably college. We played at LSU on Halloween, and it was like my second start. At LSU, Halloween, second start. Okay. Yeah off by like a bunch of two-year-olds. <laughs> well, there you go. Flipped off by a bunch of two-year-olds. That's a, that's, a, that's a tough one. That's a, that's a tough break right there. Um, uh, teammate that you're most worried about stealing your fiance? None. Good answer. Good. Okay. Uh, guilty pleasure singer slash song? Um, T. Sweezy. Oh. Wrong answer, Beyonce, always. Beyonce is always the right Wait, answer. I'm curious there. about this. Can yeah. you like hear the Super Bowl halftime show? Like, do you guys get to see it at all or no? We don't. You don't oh, get to see yeah. it at all. Okay. You get to you get to watch it afterwards, I'm sure. Yeah, you can't hear it from the from the depths of the locker room there. I still haven't watched the uh, recording of the game. You haven't watched the recording of the game? No, still haven't. Wow. Well, does anybody want to tell them what happens? <laughs> so, so the Buccaneers actually pull off the victory, uh, and then they ride off into the sunset with that. Yeah, you just got to – I want to see, like, the halftime show, the commercials. You know, I've, I've always watched the Super Bowl. There's so much more that goes into it than the game. What was what was the best what was the best commercials this year? I don't even remember. Was there uh, any crazy I ones? Know. I don't remember. I don't remember the game, so. Uh, <laughs> so you didn't miss the fight. You, guys, you didn't miss too much. You guys are seeing most of this stuff today, aren't you? Yeah. Um, the let's let's hear the the background story. If we're talking about uh, on on TV and going viral, um, there there's been a popular T-shirt that's been going around here, um, and I'm not sure if you've seen this yet, but I, I'll, I'll see if I can pull up a picture. Um, your your one of your main jobs was protecting the uh, Lombardi. From being thrown into the the ocean again. Um, now, when you're holding uh, Mr. Brady up, what, how did that how did that occur? Was that something that you you figured out? Wow, we, we need to survive this parade here, this party. Um, how did that all come about? And are you getting a portion of the t-shirt uh, proceeds here? Um, to answer an important part of that question, I haven't received a dime. Um, 
unfortunately. But supposedly neither has Tom, so uh, that's fine. Um, but yeah, like I said, you try not to drink too much alcohol, you know. Um, and I unfortunately did not live up to that standard that day. Um, Mr. Brady had a one or two as well, and so we. What really happened is we were just trying to. I was just trying to push him through because we got off the boat, and there was just a ton of cameras and media people and so instead of dealing with all that i was like all right we're just gonna push right through here and that's uh that's what we did over to the stage for the for the celebration okay all right i, I was curious how that happened uh we'll see if we can talk to those so if you, if you do see that t-shirt make sure you're you're not getting that you got to get it from the source and stuff that's uh it's not going to the or make a contribution to uh you guys my venmo <laughs> yeah. Well, well, so here's here's an interesting one. We were, we we're hoping that there was going to be another person joining us today because when he sent the email to me, what email I was supposed to send the link to, I, I thought it was like, I, I didn't realize there was a number in, attached to it as well. So I sent it to a different Ryan Griffin and, and it showed up because it was a legit email. So I was hoping that the other Ryan Griff was going to show up today, but uh, but they haven't yet. So we'll, we'll see if we can, if we still have time for that. But um, but that's good. They should fight to see who keeps the name. You, they, okay. There's a, they said you should fight to see who gets to keep the name. Is there? There's more than one Ryan Griffin, I guess. So there's somewhat of a kind of a funny story to that. So the year that I came out was 2013, and there was another Ryan Griffin who played at UConn and was a tight end, and he got drafted. So I was undrafted, but in the sixth round, Ryan Griffin got drafted. And so I got flooded with texts and calls like, congrats. Like, and I was like, you guys, like, I don't play tight end. Like, I don't know. You think I'm a lot more athletic than I am, I guess. But so all this stuff happens and I got to deal with it, and whatever. So I, I ended up meeting the guy. We played against him in a preseason game. So I was talking to him. He's like, yeah, I got all of your fan mail. So we've had this thing going back and forth. So my fiance uh, was working as a sales rep for Pfizer and she's going and meeting meeting with all these doctors this is like two years ago and so she tells them you know oh yeah my boyfriend plays football blah, blah blah well the other ryan griffin gets arrested two years ago um and so the next day or week that uh, my fiance goes in and meets all these doctors are like so sorry to hear about your boyfriend like is it okay you guys okay and i was just like we gotta we gotta keep the standard the Ryan Griffin standard high, you know, because it affects both of us. That is that is wild. I, I did not know that about the, the Rocket Griffin <laughs> side. So that that probably I was I was hoping she she wasn't gonna get. I thought you, you were gonna say they let her go because of the you know the, the trouble with her boyfriend that they're getting into. So yeah, I, I think you should have a talk with with the other Ryan and make sure that you guys are uh, are keeping the standard high. If you, if you look that up, so we know. We know which Ryan Griffin that you're looking for right here. The the OG, the OG Ryan Griffin. So keep keep the name. I don't know who would win in a fight, but to answer your question, Colin, but I think that I think we might have our money on this guy. So awesome. Uh, any any other random uh, rapid fire questions that you guys have? I, I've been kind of taking it over here. Those were some good ones. I like the Super Bowl questions too. That was a that was a good one there. The a couple other things that I, I wanted to think of when you think of the word. This doesn't have to be rapid fire, but when you think of the word success, and I know success can have different meanings to different people, um, who or what do you think of when you hear the word success? Um, when I hear success, I really think of, so along the lines of that goal setting, it's like success is determined in your own personal thing. So my success is just being a better me. And as lame as that sounds, like, that is success for me right now. Um, and so I feel like too often success is something that people let the outside world determine. Um, and so you, I think it's important that you know what your idea of success is, you know? I, I, I agree with that. And I think that having your own definition of success is a, is a huge thing too. And that kind of determines your answer a lot of times. So if your success is, is a, a certain way there, I think that's good. Um, most influential book that you have received or that you've read, um, a lot of times you can gift that as well. Most influential book or books that you've, you've had. 
Um, the Obstacle is the Way. It was a really good book. Um, I'm literally just looking at all the books that I have on my bookshelf right now. Um, Obstacle is the Way is a good book. Um, I think Ego is the Enemy is uh, another one that is pretty solid. Not on my bookshelf, so that was just off the top of the head. No big deal. Um, but yeah, those are two solid ones. Okay, I'll, I'll write those down. I like to get the uh, get that, that from people and make sure we got some uh, some good books reading. I, I think one of the one of the more influential coaches that I've had uh, gave me the quote one time that um, you can have a conversation with the most uh, most intelligent minds in history, right? Just by reading books, right? Even if the if the most uh, the smartest person in the world is, is dead now, right? You can still learn from them by reading those books and you can have some of the most interesting conversations that, that pops up because of that. And I think that's a, that's a very true one there. So um, most commonly gifted item that you have, what, what is the most commonly gifted item besides your presence in like in, in your life there? Uh, the Bible. And it's probably the most commonly gifted one in the world. That's a, that's a good one. I'm, I'm surprised that wasn't part of your most influential books, but hey, that's, I'm not going not to not comment on that. But that's, that's good. Okay. That's uh that's one that I, I hear a lot of. And I think that's very true. The most commonly gifted item. Um, and it's, it's a unique, unique perspective. I don't know if you were at, when you were in high school, if you were at, were you at a private school? Is that yeah. Right? Catholic school. Okay. So it, we're at Dowling Catholic here. So that's, that's been a really cool thing for me. I mean, I'm, I'm newer to this school than most of our, our students are here, but, um, but, but coming here and being able to have that as part of your, uh, your, your faith journey, right? You're, you're able to talk about not only, you know, developing the, the individual on their, their physical side of things, their mental side of things, the academic side, but as well as the spiritual side. So I think that's, that's good to hear. Um, that that's played a role there too. Uh, what's next for you? What is next? What is the, you know, you, you've achieved a lot of stuff. We talk about that goal setting. Uh, you talk about getting 1% better each day and improving each time. What is your, what is some, some goals in the future? What's an end goal? Um, hopefully marriage, I guess you're talking about, but, uh, what, what else besides that? What are you looking at? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to continue to play football as long as I can. Um, big goal right now is my brother is a receiver at Boise state. And I would, he's a red shirt freshman, but he's actually a senior because of COVID and everything. So um, if he has a good year, his next two years and he comes out, you know, I'd love to, I'd love to play with him wherever that is. Um, if it's in Europe and Canada and the NFL, I don't care. It'd be fun for a year to try and play with my brother. That's the big goal football wise. That's awesome. I, I didn't know that. Redshirt freshman, and he's a senior. That's that's a that's a good situation to be in right there. That's that'd be awesome. We'll be looking forward to following that journey along the way, and, and very very cool goal that you have there too. Um, last couple things here, and I, I don't want to keep you, but uh, I like to know: Is there anything? What what's something that you wish you would have known in high school? One of my big reasons for. Uh, for, for bringing somebody in like you that can actually talk about, you know, different perspectives and, and bringing that in. Um, I wanted to start this because of, I wanted to, to give them things that I wish I would have known back then in their position. Uh, what are some things that, that you wish you could go back and tell yourself or, or tell the, the future minds of tomorrow? That's a great question. I, I think what I would tell people is just not to be so stressed about every decision you make. Like everyone thinks every, like every test, every decision is, you know, the, this is it. This is the end of the world. Every quiz. And it's like, if I don't do this, then I'm not going to do that. And do this, just relax. All right. You guys take a chill pill over there. You guys are going to be fine. You guys just, you know, keep working on yourselves, have a good time, work hard, but you don't have to freak out about everything. That's good. The, the chill pill and, and see if we can take some, uh, some chill. So I, I think that's a really good, uh, good information though. I think a lot of times you look at, you, you talk to people that have been through situations and you go back and look at that. And, and I think one of the most common things is exactly what you said there is, is uh, being able to take a step back and realize, you know, 
enjoy the moment, right? Not get so caught up in, oh, I have to do this, 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 and, and being able to, you know, plan for the future. Enjoy the moment and, and enjoy what you're doing. And because I think, I think you, you'd attest to this too, Ryan, that uh, it's not going to last forever, right? You're going to, it's going to fly by. And the, the eight years you said that you've been, you've been playing and it's, it's actually absolutely flown by as well, I'm sure. So, yeah. 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 The, the next, the next eight, six, eight years of your life are, are going to be the best because you don't have a ton of responsibility. They're going to probably be the best years of your life. Like I still, I would trade a year in the NFL for going back, being 20 years old and being in college again. So, I mean, those are the best times. You'll have the most fun. You don't have to worry about a mortgage and all that stuff. So I just truly enjoy it. I work hard, but really enjoy it. That's great, great advice there, especially for our seniors that are going to be going out in about two or three days here. They're going to be going into the, the real world there. So um, enjoy those those years, and I think that's a, that's a very, very good advice in that too. Um, the last last couple of things, unless if you guys have extra questions, let me know. Um, but the last two things, no pressure here either, but inspirational life-changing quotes that you want to you wanna give to us or, or potential knowledge bombs that you want to drop on these these young minds or for the, for the world here. Um, my favorite quote, I believe it's by Teddy Roosevelt is, um, see, it's a long one. So you have to bear with me. It's basically, it says far better is it to dare mighty things and to fail than it is to be one of the people that live in the darkness that know neither victory nor defeat. So basically saying, like my thing, bet on yourself, go for it, shoot your shot, do what you got to do, but don't be one of those suckers that are just never, never trying, not going for it because they're afraid of failure. You know, they're afraid of what's going to happen. My big thing is, you know, you just got to go for it. I love that. That, that would have been, that would have been even crazier if you, uh, if you told us that was, that was written by Ryan Griffin himself, I, I would have believed you there too. So that's, that's a, uh, that's pretty good. I think that's some, some snaps there. Derek, what's what's your question? I have that quote in my room. That's that's a good quote. Look at that. It's, it's, in, it's in like a picture frame. You're inspiring it's kids already. Look at that. You're inspiring kids. The uh, did I nail the quote? Was that spot on? It's like that's exactly like pretty much. That's what spot on. He said. That's uh, it's well, like you took it from Teddy himself. A bunch of words, but yeah. That's yeah. Like, it's like what's that's that's uh, really good stuff. I, I think that's that's a great way. I, quotes are one of my favorite things. I do mind candy here at the beginning and. Um, and I, I think that that's, that's really good to, to have that from, from different books or whatever else. You can really uh, live by that and have your good statement there. But um, that, that's awesome. I, I, I appreciate so much having you join us today, Ryan. It's, it's a, always a pleasure to, to see that beautiful smile and, the, and, and hear some of the knowledge bombs. It, it's, uh, it's great to have you here. But I appreciate it. I, I will gather any other questions that our, uh, that our class has here. Um, any way that they, uh, if they want to continue to follow your journey along with you, I know they, they said the gram probably isn't the best, but if you look up the Ryan Griffin quarterback, not tight end, or Ryan Griffin the OG, you can uh, you can look that up. Any other way that they should follow you or anything like that? That's the. Uh, There's a uh, kid with very brief here in Tampa that's a, in high school that started a, a fan page for me Griffin Greatness it's a, that's probably the best way it literally has all of my information content he posts like 10 times more than I do wow that's, it's, it's actually me guys I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm, the I'm, actually, yeah, Griffin I'm actually the Griffin Greatness but, well thank you so much Ryan I really appreciate having you here and uh, let's give him three on three one two three awesome thank you Ryan